Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and say thank you because you've been good to us, Lord. You gave us breath. That's right now, oh God. Touch our mind, our body. Let us give you thanks and praise, oh God, and let your people give us now of all things. Let you be blessed in all that we do, oh God. Bless our mind, oh God, and our thoughts. And give you the blessed the lesson tonight. Let it be taken to heart, and let what will be used, oh God, for the glorification of the kingdom. In your holy name we pray that. Thank you, Lord. lesson tonight is it's a lesson that calls us to remembrance and not forget about God situations because tonight we talk from this point a question have you given God thanks in this season now this season as we all know has been more than we could seem like could bear but uh, God being God he takes care of us and he lets us know that he's in charge. Yes, Lord. And I thank and I praise him for all of that. And so we bless God's name tonight as we we look at this lesson tonight. Um, it starts out with a scripture that comes from the book of Romans and it's the 14th chapter and the 6th verse and this scripture says that he that regarded the day regarded it unto the Lord and he that regarded not the day to the Lord he does not regard it he that eateth eateth to the Lord for he giveth thanks, God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth thanks, giveth God thanks. Paul is saying tonight that whatever we do, we ought to do it with Jesus in mind. We look on with me as I go through this passage of scripture with you. talks about it says that we are undoubtedly all watching and abiding by the things and the events that are taking place in the world today amen, amen. violence yes. sickness and disease yes. it's all grabbed a hold to uh, this society we live in now has a grip on it, doesn't it? Yes. And we all are watching it. But we say as to, as we notice, we take notice of, of these things, let us not take notice of them without the knowledge of God. The knowledge that God is always and always is in control. Of not just some of the things, but in all of the things. Amen. Now, uh, that's, why the, that's what the scriptures means about regard on it unto the Lord. Let you know that uh, God is in charge of everything. Yes. But he says that uh, even in the day, whatever the day is, whatever the day is doing, let us regard it to the Lord. In other words, we got to bind it over uh, into God's hands. Our cares and our trust in God can't be shaken. It's got to be given. We got to tell him, Lord, we place this in your hand. That's humble submission. God already has it, but he wants you to know he has it. And you got to be willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to let you 
do what you see fit. Many times in my life, I, I can remember saying, uh, it's in the Lord's hands. And that's all I was saying. I was not doing anything to make it sure. I didn't say anything to uh, tell God that I appreciated him having it, that I thank him for what he has already done. But now listen what, listen what it says. After we to alter regard it all unto the Lord, and this is one reason why the scriptures tell us in Psalms 1 and 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth, we, doth he meditate day and night. That's how you, that's how you're going to regard it. Meditate in his law. You, you wonder how you're going to see things, how you're going to do things. Meditate on the Lord, and so you will be regarding it unto the Lord. Now, it says that everything that the word of God says, that he is, and what they say that he will do, and what the word says he will be, we must always keep it in our mind to take everything on the advice of the Holy Ghost. You don't do what you're doing, try to do it alone. Don't go it alone. Everything that uh, we think of and everything that we contemplate on, we better do it of the Lord. Or else you leave everything open to Satan's advice. Amen. Whereas he will take control. We made a song about that. Don't let the devil rise. Because we know if we just back up and the devil is coming. Amen. Now, I, I, I look at this. It's according to this one law that you can't go around. And it's in Romans, the seventh chapter, verse number 21. If we do not firmly plant it in our minds, to will our works unto the Lord. We will automatically will it unto Satan to take control. Now I got a law on that. Uh, the, the, let me tell you something. What God says he will do, he'll do it. Amen. What you don't give God uh, the opportunity to do for you, Satan will do it. Amen. Amen. And when God's not getting glory, you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. Most folk are just worried about getting it done, getting whatever done, making it be. But it's got to be to the glory of the Lord, unto the Lord. Now look at this. Anybody got uh, the Bible with them tonight? I want you to go to that book of Romans, the seventh chapter, 721, and see what, what the word says. I told you that if you don't take control of it, Give God control of it. Satan will take control of it. Let's prove it tonight. Romans 721. Y'all see it? Yeah. Say it. Come on, read it with me. And, and when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter said to him. Romans 721. Yeah. Y'all got it? Yeah. Romans 721 says what? Say, say it again. That's the law. That, that's what I'm talking about. That scripture, you can't go around it. Say it again. What about that law? Now, he's going to be right there waiting on you to slip up. Waiting on you to go to sleep on him. Waiting on you not to act upon what you need to be acting upon. And Satan going to ease in. See, when he sees that that you have not given that will over to the Lord for a certain thing, he's going to move in and he's going to take possession of that will. Because there's a law. When I would do good, evil is present with me. So, so let me read on and this will make it plainer. No, no, no. Read, read down here on the paper here. If we do not firmly plant it in our mind to what? Come on. The Lord's will and not choose to do Satan's will. Now, think about that. 
just because you don't, uh, I, I don't, I ain't, ain't no who, who gonna do it? Uh, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't asked the Lord to do that to, to fix nothing. Listen, if you don't ask God to fix it, you, you can say, well, I'm, I'm just, I ain't one way or the other. I'm just standing there, uh, I'm just living my life. Listen, you don't have a neutral place to stand in. Either you are giving God the glory or you're giving Satan the glory. That's what the law says. Evil is present with you. It's going to be with you, right? Not, not after a while, but presently. It's always there. Always there. Now, we've been warned through the scripture to guard our minds and our hearts. There's only one way to accomplish this. One way to accomplish the guarding of your mind, and it's in Philippians 4 and 7. It's on the paper there. Catch me. And the peace of God, which but it's through Jesus. Amen. You got to keep your mind on Jesus. All right. Amen. If you want, now you say the peace of God. You know, a lot of times people don't value the peace of God. Some people think that oh, we're just living a life. We're not just in this world. You got to have the peace of God. If you don't have the peace of God, you're subject to lose your mind over anything. All right. You're subject to do anything. You have to watch yourself. So have you given God thanks in this season of test and trial? We're being tested on. Oh, yes. Yes, well, trials of life are really something right now. Oh, yes. But it lets me know this. We are always having trials and tests. We've studied a whole uh, season long about trials and tests. And, and I'll tell you this, uh, as we're going through life, it seems like our trials and our tests get harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Families are being tested every time I turn around. There's something going on in a family and they put you to the test. What kind of test? See whether or not you're gonna be of God. You will regard it unto God or not. What will you do? Oh, children won't act right. Before you know it, you're in the middle of a whole bunch of mess because one child, and they just, one of your children, children, it's just like east side and west side trying to have games and fights. Listen, it's just your cousin's children. Yeah, right. Your sister moved from the east side to the west side, and, and their children ain't doing with them. Just kidding, folk. We got to regard everything we do. Unto the Lord. Look what he said. We do not have the luxury. What? Come on. To do all that we should even. In times of national concern. That's going on right now. In this, we still must remain saved and faithful and we got to be expecting God to do great things. The church of all institutions got to expect God to handle this virus. We got to have, we got to have God to do it. We got to regard God. We got to know that God is in control. If not anything else, in control of my life. Yeah. Whether I live or die, I live or die under Christ. Yeah, right. That's what Christians are supposed, supposed to do. God's got to be willfully given yeah. the control of our lives. You won't have it any other way. Now, Something that seems to be overlooked or taken lightly is the fact that we are required to give thanks to God in everything so as not to forget no thing, nothing. It is a part of doing God's will, even as, and especially in. <clears throat> Want to quit church? Stop supporting the church. 
I'm not going. I'm not going to be supporting. You, you can't do, you got to regard God in everything. Can't take this as a vacation away from God. You can't do it. Come on, I'm going on a hiatus. You might be on a hiatus, but you headed to a low hiatus. God will not be slighted. You, you know, I think about this. You can't quit God now. And then when, when, when Corona is over, it is going to be over. Then you come back and assume your position. Assume your place in the church. God will take that. And, and he's going to get these preachers for letting it be done that way. You can't uh, go off on God like that and decide you're not going to do it for God. Amen. God has done too much for us. Amen. I stop and I think about the season that we just celebrated. The season of, of Jesus going to the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. What he had done for us. And going to the cross. And then we then, then right after that, here comes the test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see. Did he did he really die for you? Mm -hmm. Are you glad he died? Uh, uh, no, because I see you quit church. Uh -huh. Now listen, I'm not talking about just quitting the building, mm -hmm. but quit the faith. Mm -hmm. Some folk weren't weren't in the church, some folk weren't claiming Christianity, but they were in Christianity. There's a difference. You can't just be in Christianity. You got to be a Christian. Amen. With duties uh, uh, pending. Every, every day you got to do what a Christian is supposed to do. You, you can't just walk through this Christianity life. You just can't do it. Come on, let's, let's see what it says here. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, <clears throat> In, it, in, in everything, give thanks. Come on, why? Concerning you. He's telling you, don't you let it get by you. But he says that we ought to give thanks in everything. For this is the, not the choice of God. That's the will of God. God wants his church to give him thanks. He do the thanks. Look what it says down in Hebrews 13 and 15 says. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Come on. As daily as the virus is, there is no time to be quiet on God. This is the specific time that the world can hear us giving thanks to our God, Jehovah. Mm hmm. Christian life. It's a pleasant life. It is to me. The Christian life. I, you know what? A lot of things I've forgotten how to do that weren't pleasing to God. I don't want to be reminded. I, it's, it's not anything I want to continue to do. That's why I came to Jesus. I came to him and the life that God has given me I don't care what all I've had to go through. It is a pleasant life for me. Thank God. Amen. Amen. It's a pleasant life. And we got to know that God is real. And you know what? We just can't be Christians when it's good times. Amen. Amen. We, can't, we just can't do it. So many folks are, are, are trying to do so many different things. So many folks are, are trying to do a separation of, 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 the, of the saints of God. They want to separate what life and troubles. They want to separate those things. But it's all together. Everything you got in your life that's coming to you, that's happening with you, God knows it. You, and you got to choose him over all these circumstances and situations. And look what it says here. In Christ. How, how many believe that? You, you better have a joy about you Oh, that's, that's full. You say, and it is our fault if we have not. On and in him. Listen. We got to have a 
joy in us. Yes. That'll carry us from one sermon Sunday to the next sermon Sunday. Yes. We got to have some, some words to look back on during the week. And we're going to have to feast on that. That means sufficient. All right. Sufficiently. Yes. It's enough to keep me full until the next Sunday. All right. uh, one preacher told me, he said, he said, I ain't going back over to the church. The, the corona up in, I told my folk, they got a Bible, they got a Sunday school book, read that. That that's supposed to be sufficient for them. To feast on all while corona is going on. God told him they can't hear without you. He told you that. He said, and, they got, and hearing come by the word of God. Faith does come. Yeah. But it's got to be by the word of God. He, he said hearing. Hearing. Amen. Hearing the preacher. Amen. Preacher got to preach. And the people got to hear. Yeah. Now, talking about this, this fullness of joy that we have. Look what it says. We are still, we are to still have joy and rejoice. It's a difference between having joy and rejoicing. You can tell me all day long, I got joy. But have I never seen you rejoice? Just get up and thank the Lord because you got joy. Just get up somewhere. Tell God, thank you. I just want to tell him thank you. I listen I listen all the time. Uh, I be sitting at the computer doing something, and my wife is be giving a concert. One song after the other. Whatever comes to our mind. But God says, regard him. Amen. It's got to be in your mind. You got to have a song that you hum and sing. It's not about how well you sing. You got to sing that song. That ought to be your theme song in the morning. Lord, I know you've been so good. Hmm. I ask you this. After say we still ought to have joy and rejoice. Second Corinthians six and ten makes it a little bit plainer. It's on the paper and it's also in you go ahead and read the scripture if you want to. But Second Corinthians six and ten. Hold hold it right there. Hold it. Look what read that again. That, that, that last part. As poor, wait a minute. How you gonna do that? Look, Jesus said you gotta have joy. You gotta rejoice. He said, in everything you're doing, that's why we started off there. All in the day, we gotta regard it to God. Listen, being poor. Making many rich. You poor and you gonna make how you gonna make somebody rich? Tell them the Lord is great. Amen. You may not have a dime. What if you just tell, have I have I told you there? Have anybody told you today that the Lord is merciful? Amen. But yeah, I don't know about that because <laughs> my 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 mama and the, No, God is merciful because He spared your life. <laughs> Gave you a chance to get things right with it. God is merciful. He said, we, we, we can't go around talking about we broke all the time. We got something we can help somebody with that truly needs help. Amen. Now, that's us. To help somebody. He said, make somebody else rich. You just made a, that person rich. You made them rich in God. Amen. Letting them know that there's somebody standing in your, on your side. Somebody willing to help you. When you thought you were down and out, had no choice, no nowhere to go, you were down and out, but somebody to come by and tell you, let me give you a hand up. Amen. God loves you, Amen. but you got to act right. Yes, God will help you, but you got to help yourself. Amen. You got to come to him and tell God, I, I, I'm, I'm remorseful for my life. I'm sorry, Lord. Help me, touch me, so I can get right with you. And you just made them so rich. They, you gave them a whole kingdom. All right, all right. They got a kingdom. 
Look what it says here. Now, we're talking about making other rich when you eat out of dime. He said, have nothing. Yet, oh, I got everything I need. I'm not worried about health and strength because, look, if I live, I live to God. If I die, I die to God. Now, if I was out there in the world, I could be in perfect health and I'd still be in trouble. But if I die, if I don't wake up, everything's going to be all right. How is this possible? The answer to that question is Philippians 4 and 7. Read. Yeah. Ain't no peace in your house. Broke up. Everything going wrong. And the peace of God, which uh-huh. Going stone crazy because everybody acting a fool in your house. Everybody you know talking crazy, mad because they can't get the stimulus check. Yeah. Everything yeah. messed up. Look, they, they're mad. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't going back up there. I've I been trying to get, I can't get nothing. Look, look, how can you do all, how can you look? How can you be poor having nothing make many rich? How can you rejoice? And trouble everywhere. In this season, how can you rejoice? The question. I got the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. No, I know. I don't expect you to know why I'm, I'm smiling and everything around me is falling down. Why am I happy? Why am I happy? And everything, everybody messing up. I'm sick. I don't have any groceries. How can I be happy? I got the peace of God. Yeah. Peace of God comes like this. I know God will. Oh, yeah. We better start telling people. Yes, they need to know. They need to know about this peace that I have. The world, they can't take it away. I got the peace of God. And, and I, I don't expect you to understand it. Sometimes I don't understand it. Because it surpasses all understanding. Not just yours, but mine too. About me. It surpasses all of that. I got the peace of God. The peace of God. Come on, get that bottle. The peace of God allows us who believe now It's one thing to be thankful, mm -hmm. and again, another thing to be to have thanksgiving. Right. The peace of God allows us to, to be thankful, to believe in the power of the Almighty God. I'm thankful because I've got the peace of God. I can thank God when, I, when my pocket's empty. All right. Having me, not only empty, pocket's empty. I can still have joy. Yes, sir. Yes. After all, I've seen, I've been through. Yes. Still got joy. Thank you, Lord. Every day, I got joy. Yes. When the phone rang, give me bad news, I got joy. Yes. The joy that won't let you worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. Right. Thank you, Lord. How can we still operate under this virus? I got joy. And Jesus won't let me sit down on him. I told you that it's required of Christians. Required to be cautious. You can't just walk where you want to walk. You can't go, can't talk what you want to talk. You can't go where you've been going. But you got to have caution. But if you got faith, that won't allow, that won't allow fear. We won't allow faith, we won't allow fear. Amen. As we are going through this test and this trial of coronavirus, we still got to have joy. Amen. We still got to have Jesus. Amen. If you get Jesus, you got joy. Amen. Whatever you do. The Bible of the scripture said, 
He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. Get up in the morning time. I know God did. Yes. When the problems come up and, and you're about ready to go and, uh, 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 and do something that you're not do, but, but something on your mind, let you know, I can't act like this. Amen. I got Jesus to represent. Yes. When you settle down at the end of the day, what you should have done, you didn't do. You can say, I know it was you. Have you ever stopped to think about something that was going on? Something that maybe should have gone on. But God didn't let it happen. And you stop and take inventory for the day and you go to counting up your blessings and you finally find yourself saying this. That had to be the Lord. Amen. He knew I was headed that way. I, I remember I was getting ready to go down to Osceola to pick a man up to help me do some work. And uh, normally, that's, that's what I did. I got in that truck and run down on Ziola. I came over to the church. And as I back up from the back of the, the storage building, coming out, the front wheel broke off. Broke off. And I stopped to thank God. Right then and right there. I told God, thank you. I knew where I was headed. I knew what would have happened had that wheel broken off down that highway. It had to be Jesus. Yeah. I regard God in everything. You, I don't get on that highway. He can go nowhere without me asking God. Lord, go with me. Give me peace and safety. Yeah. You better learn to do that every day because that's what God requires. Because he says, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day regardeth not the Lord. Lord. And let me tell you something. I think about God in everything. Everything I do, I think about God. First of all, I, if I was going to do something wrong, I do. I had a choice. Which way would God be pleased? And in this law, does He meditate? You can't forget about God no time of the day. You cannot forget God because you always need God on your side. Plain and simple, we need the Lord. There's nothing we can do without Him. Have you given God thanks in this season? You gotta keep thanking God, even though Corona is, is, is real. I talked to a brother Sunday morning. Came in, he said, "One more Sunday morning, and I'm Corona free." Told me that, and I thank God. In this season, he regarded God. He said, "I don't have it in this season." And so we don't want to have to be thankful that in this season of ours, whatever is going on, that we regard God. Amen. And give God thanks and praise in this season. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.